Why are some nations rich and others poor? In his 1998 book titled The Wealth and Poverty of Nations, Why Some Are So Rich and Some So Poor, Harvard historian David Landes provides important insight into why the distribution of wealth in the world is so varied. For historical background, he notes that from 1750 to 1100, Islamic science and technology surpassed Europe's. However, in 1100, Muslim militant religion took over. Islam integrates secular and religious. China was another contender for world dominance 500 years ago since they had made major advances from gunpowder to uh, paper and printing. However, interruption of Islamic and Chinese intellectual and technological advance, not only cessation, but the institutionalization of stoppage. For example, China fell behind because of the absence of free markets, thus stifling uh, initiative. Why bother? Uh, another is gender issue, where women uh, could work only in the home. Exception was Japan. And totalitarian society kills innovation. He argues that there were three European institutional pillars that allowed Europe to become so rich relative to the rest of the world. These included autonomy of intellectual inquiry. Europe had some issues as Islam and China, for example, the Holy Inquisition. It had intellectual conflicts over the validity and authority of tradition, for example, the Roman Church. New ideas become, became subverted in all of these societies. However, in Europe, Acceptance was eased by practical usefulness and protected by rulers who sought to gain advantage over rivals. Thus, it cultivated a sense of pro uh, progress. Method. Creation of a language of proof recognized, used, and understood across national and cultural boundaries. Seeing alone was not enough. One must understand and give non-magical explanations for natural phenomena. No room for unicorns and salamanders. It developed a powerful combination of perception with measurement, verification, and mathematized deduction, the key to knowing, knowing uh, like it was developed anywhere else, nothing like it was developed anywhere else. The experimental method and routinization of discovery, the invention of invention, creation of scholarly societies that the, so they have communities of scholars exchanging information and ideas. For example, the Royal Society of London created in 1660. This invention of invention was important in a number of contexts, including the water wheel. It developed in response to the loss of slaves when conquest by Romans was over. It was a new source of power. Once have that concept, then can improve, for example, cranks and uh, tooth gears, and also apply to other areas besides grinding grain, such as pounding cloth, hammering metal, rolling and drawing sheet metal, mashing hops, pulping rags for paper, no other culture had tried to mechanize manufacture of paper. Eyeglasses, a doubled working life of skilled craftsmen, more so uh, if consider experience. Once have eyeglasses, have knowledge of lenses, so you can build microscopes, telescopes, make fine instruments, and learn more about the world. The mechanical clock, before people told time by the sun, medieval Europe gave importance to reliable time. First, the church with daily prayers, later with bringing order and control to both public and private activities, gave a new sense of rhythm. But one of the most important was technological. If you can build a fine clock, you can build other fine instruments. Printing. Invented by the, invented by the Chinese, they also invented paper, but it never exploded in China as it did in Europe. Once you have easy and widespread printing, can preserve and disseminate knowledge. Create a literate public with education, which in turn feeds on uh, other developments. And gunpowder. They got these from the uh, Chinese, though relied on incendiaries rather than explosives. Perhaps because of their superior numbers and that fighting against nomadic adversaries did not call for siege warfare. Europeans developed guns and cannons.